Hi, this is Steve Hargadon, and welcome to the Future of Education. It is Tuesday, August 17th, 2010, and our special guests are Daniel Lickblau and Kyle Ruddick from the One Down Earth Project. Daniel, did I say your last name correctly? Yes, you did. Oh, good. Yeah. Kyle, welcome to you as well. Hi, yeah. Uh, I also wanted to make sure that um, we recognized um, Carrie Ann Chimsham and Jay Silver, who are here too, who um, have worked real hard on our, our educational materials. So, um, but uh, hello, everyone in cyberspace. Hi, Kyle. Thanks, Carrie Ann, and thanks, Jay. Glad you're here, and you both have microphones so you can talk. The Future of Education is sponsored by Illuminate, my employer. It's going to be Blackboard Collaborate. The project I work on is called Learn Central. It's a free social network for educators that has Illuminate baked in. We hope you'll come and play around. The Global Education Conference is up. The call for presentations went out this week. Please go to globaleducationconference.com. Lots of fun. We should have a few hundred presentations, I'm going to guess. Anyway, five days, multiple time zones, multiple languages, multiple tracks, and all for free should be really exciting. We hope that you all consider joining us um, and participating in some way. We're really hoping to get a lot of people who will present who haven't normally presented. The goal is inclusion. Coming up on the Future Education Interview Series tomorrow, Linda Darling Hammond from Stanford and then Carol Dweck on our book Mindset, also from Stanford at Stanford Week. Uh, next week on the 23rd, Amber Mack is going to talk about her book, Power Friending. I know this isn't strictly in the realm of education, but what a great book on social media. It will have implications for all organizations using it. Then Kathleen Cushman on her book, Fires in the Mind, the BYU-Idaho Learning Model, George Siemens, then Vicki Abelli's from the Race to Nowhere movie, Craig Watkins, and new coming up, Charlene Lee on her book, Open Leadership. Again, not strictly educational, but Charlene, uh, co-author of Groundswell, uh, should be really fun. And also new on this list, um, DiMartino and Walk on the Personalized High School in October, and Nancy White's back to talk about networks and communities. Uh, and Tony Krasnick on a book called Concise Learning, and Phil Schlechty on Leading for Learning, Building a Learning School. If you've missed a session, they are all recorded. Last week's fascinating interview with David Wood on Get Paid for Who You Are. If you didn't attend and the subject of entrepreneurship is of interest to you, well worth listening to. Uh, fascinating discussion with someone whose business is running an information business. Uh, warts and all. Before that, Charles Fidel on the Neuroscience of Learning, Milton Channel on Education Nation, lots of great material. We hope there's something there that's appealing to you. If this is your first time in Illuminate, we do encourage you to participate. You can see that there are a variety of ways to do so. Don't let that slide intimidate you. At the bottom of the participant window, you'll see a clapping hand, a smiley face, a clapping hand, confused look or a thumbs down. You're welcome to use those. Of course, the presenters prefer the smiley face and the clapping hand. It's easiest to see the chat if you go up to View Layouts and select the wide layout. It's a little easier to see the chat. In the chat, you can send private messages to each other using the drop-down box, but do be aware that the moderators see all of those messages. Now we get to do a little bit of fun here. We're going to give you permissions to modify this map. Look to the left of the map. You'll see a laser pointer. It's a wand with a red star. Click on that and then click on the map to let us know where you're listening from. India, Australia, Peru. I thought we had uh, Brazil in the mix. Canada, well, wherever you're listening from, or if you're listening to the recording, we're sure glad that you joined us for this session. Okay, so Daniel and Kyle, I'm going to turn it over to you. You have some slides. Use the single right arrow to start moving through the slides. I'll put you in your first one. Uh, feel free to give whatever introductions you would like, and then as you're ready for Q&A, cue me up and let me know, and I'll help people do that. 
Sure. Uh, thank you so much, everyone online, for coming out to listen about our project. Um, first off, I just want to recognize uh, um, the education team that's here, that's present here, who's been working hard for the last six months, and um, particularly Carrie Ann Shimsham has uh, been um, in the middle of um, the majority of the authoring of the project, and Daniel Lickbaugh has been authoring as well as doing a ton of um, outreach and really being a connector through the process, and Jay Silver, who um, has been a, a, an advisor and a mentor and also uh, you know, kind of an inspiration um, related to uh, his work and, and really understanding how to, to um, build, build this sort of thing into the future. So um, without further ado, that's, um, they, uh, they will be available as well to uh, answer questions as we move along. And, um, Let's talk about one day on Earth. Um, first off, is um, I think it's always good to start a class with a video. So um, we have a trailer that was created from participants' footage, and I guess this isn't a class; it's a presentation. But it's um, I think it's a good introduction to the overall project, and we can talk more about the particulars. So, about how long is this video? I think it's about two minutes. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna we'll see the length of the video. I'll set a timer. If for some reason the video doesn't come up for you or it's firewalled or blocked, we'll put the link into the chat and you can look at it later. For those of you who do get this video, if you need to click play, go ahead and click play as soon as it comes up on your screen. And you can resize your window. We're going to watch the participant trailer. You guys are welcome to watch both of these. The original trailer is great too, but um, we're very proud to say the participant trailer was created um, uh, with from, uh, from footage from actual documentarians who are participating in our project. Okay, so go ahead and click play, everybody, and we're going to put the timer on. Kyle, you're back. Okay, cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, that's uh, that's what we do. We we, we work in posts and we build docs around here. So, um, um, it's a great uh, sample. So I, I want to just talk a little bit more about what One Day on Earth is. Um, you know, as you may have gathered from the trailer, um, on October 10, 2010, this year, 10, 10, 10. Um, we, uh, in every country in the world, we have participants filming during that 24-hour period. And they will be sharing their results together as part of an online community through uploading those videos to www.onedayonearth.org. And we have um, a community of educators, nonprofits, and professional filmmakers, as well as, um, I would inspired citizens um, all over the world. And um, uh, that's what we're here to talk about. So, um, what is One Day on Earth? It is an online community. It is a video time castle. Um, you know, after we gather all of the content from everyone's contributions, we can we can sort it in a lot of ways, and we're really looking forward to creating a searchable view. Um, both through a Google Earth interface that's geotagged, but also through topic information that you provide as you upload. Um, and it's a feature film. We're going to be creating a documentary film from um, 
from everyone's collaboration on this, and it, it will be focused on best representing daily life on this planet as recorded on 10 10 10. So, um, the One Day on Earth educational program. Um, it's uh, centered around free educational toolkits that uh, we've been working really hard on around here. And um, it promotes media literacy. It teaches documentary filmmaking and photography. It challenges students to make a critical inquiry into the world around them. And it features online classrooms um, and encourages cross-cultural collaboration as well as supporting the 21st century learning skills. Um, in addition, we've designed it to, to align with local educational standards through project entry points. Uh, how are the toolkits structured? So, you know, um, there's several working parts to this, and we wanted to be as flexible as possible. And the first part is, um, the projects and projects were probably the most fun um, part of writing this curriculum because they were where we just got to be creative and create some jumping off points to get involved in One Day on Earth. And I want to be clear that projects, um, you know, these are our, our ideas of how to participate and we want to challenge um, and ask teachers across the world to come up with their own projects because essentially they're, they're, they're points they're subject-based points designed to align with the local standards, and they are um, public spaces on our website that are geared towards collaboration. So a project will uh, be a space where this is what we're all going to do together, or this is what my class is going to do, and how we're going to focus on our participation with One Day on Earth. Um, the projects, um, so yeah, I guess I kind of got ahead of myself here, but you know, we ask what project would you do? And we have we have our suggestions, and then we also want to you know open this up to we know that there's there's communities already collaborating on our site, already developing their own sense of how they are going to work together and what sort of prompts they're going to use to documenting ten ten ten. Um, lesson plans. Uh, this was the you know the bulk of our work. We put together ten lesson plans. They are the core curriculum. They teach fundamental skills students will need to participate in one day on Earth. Um, they are, you know, everything from shooting to uploading to what participatory media is. Um, they're supplemented, each lesson is supplemented by a slideshow and supplemented by videos. Um, the videos are a collection of videos that we have found either from friends, produced ourselves, or they exist online, and they will be embedded within our site related to each lesson. Um, and in addition, we have worksheets, which are handouts, and they provide age-appropriate lessons and activities so students can participate from different age groups. Um, so some sample projects. Um, I'll run through these pretty quickly. There's a lot of them. And as I said, um, they're going to be very exciting, I think, to see the ones that take off because um, people are going to be learning about who else is participating in the same project idea at the same time um, because they'll be joining the group to, to talk about the project. Um, you know, uh, we have environment-based projects. We have a project called Proof by Picture that's focused on the scientific method so that you create a scientific, um, you know, a science project essentially. But the, the focus is that you're, you're recording the evidence within the, that 24-hour period of 10-10-10. Um, one example we had is, you know, even time lapses of uh, plants growing and, and things of that nature. Um, Local Plants and Animals Project, um, I think that's self-explanatory. Borders Project, not just international borders, but geological borders, so, um, economic borders. Um, what, th what does it mean to have a boundary in general? We found that to be a very powerful photographic and video topic. Um, your local beach project, urban and rural environment project, um, and sharing. Sharing projects, um, we have a historical photo recreation, pro recreation, not recreation. <laughs> I guess it's recreational to do it, but it's, it's a recreation project. Um, a picture in a thousand words, a video collaboration. Video collaboration is actually sort of the, um, 
I, I want to definitely point that one out when people um, actually use these kits because it, it sets it sets up some good guidelines related to, you know, working together with schools in different regions. And, you know, all of these can be integrated with video collaboration. So there's no reason you couldn't do a collage montage project together with another school. And I think that, that, that that's really exciting to us. I think we really want to push the idea that um, instructors from different regions that have never interacted before um, participate in the same, same sort of um, general constraints and then sort of share each other's footage and get to kind of have a pen pal back and forth as well as, um, you know, maybe even sharing their footage for post-production to make something that is actually created from footage from two different places. And, um, and then they've made a film together without actually ever um, being in the same space. Um, moving right along, um, so, uh, okay, uh, moving right along is um, ma make a film and dance collaboration, um, I'm sure, uh, and write a song and document a song on 101010. Um, you know, those are those are self-explanatory as well. Um, we have an oral history project. We have your meals project. You know, film what you ate that day. Um, we have making a meal, which is essentially film what your grandmother or your family or you know you made that for a meal that day. Um, we have birthing, birthdays, weddings, and family events. There's a lot of birthdays. There's a lot of weddings. There's a lot of events. And we have document dance, theater performance, and we have looking at money. Now, there's there's a lot of these, obviously, and you know we think there could be a lot more. We we definitely this project is open, and the idea is is that you know whoever is participating in One Day on Earth should think of this as their own. And if you're you're in t instructing on a particular subject, or if you wanted to take one of these projects and combine two of them or modify them, um, you know, we, these are, start like we said, jumping off points and suggestions for everyone. Um, so here's a sample project, and it's not the entire thing, but um, historic photo recreation. This actually comes from a, uh, a participant in our project. Uh, he's a documentary filmmaker and artist who lives in Santa Barbara, California. And this year he actually traveled to Indonesia to recreate historical photos, and it was so inspiring to us. And um, we had, we've, we've become fr we've friends with him, and he um, shared some of his work. And this is what he did: he did a, a photo recreation. A photo recreation. I did it again. Photo recreation. Um, so he traveled to Indonesia, and they had these historic stereographs built in, you know, shot in the turn of the century. And these are actually 3D images. And um, uh, he went there and he recreated them. So our prompt is, you know, find a historical photograph um, from your local town or from your school or from your community and go to that location and maybe, maybe you recreate it, but maybe you just film and maybe you just photograph. And you can, you know, because we're creating a historical document by, by w within one day on Earth in the first place, it's, it creates a lot of um, um, discussion and learning just from an interest and just a visually interesting thing to be able to see the change over time within a location like this. Um, uh, I wanted to just give a brief overview of uh, a sample lesson. You know, you're not going to be able to read this, which is probably going to annoy you a little bit. But we wanted to get a sense of like the amount of material that's in a lesson and kind of like how the lessons are laid out, how they look, how much is kind of um, there for the teachers. Um, these will be PDFs that are downloadable, um, you know, print if you need to. Um, we will, and, uh, you know, soon we will be distributing these. So I just wanted to get a sense of, give you a sense of what they look like. Um, sample slideshow. Um, what is participatory media? We actually cut a slideshow in half because we didn't want to um, give you the full uh, um, lecture because it just felt like it would, might go long. Um, but uh, this is a section of a slideshow within the introductory lesson that um, we feel is good to um, give an introduction to participatory, participatory media. Sorry. Um, so what is participatory media? Um, Participatory media is content that is shared in an open community venue. Um, it is produced by private citizens. And examples of participatory media include media sites such as Facebook, 
blogs, wiki, wikis such as Wikipedia, um, video sharing sites such as YouTube and Vimeo, and music sites such as Pandora, photo sharing sites such as Flickr, podcasts, and even participatory media of video projects like One Day on Earth. Um, participatory media sh shares three common characteristics. One, the power of participatory media derives from the active participation of a group's members, of a particular group's members for that matter. Two, when networks are combined with other networks, they can become better performing networks. The concept here is One Day on Earth is a mashup of technology. We will be utilizing the Vimeo video platform combined with the Ning platform, combined with Google Earth and Google Maps APIs, combined with a few other technologies. So we've been managed to ma mash those things together and uh, build something that is hopefully more effective for everyone's use. Three participatory media shares three, com oh, sorry, I get lost. Um, I'm not used to lecturing, so hopefully you guys are dealing with me well here. Um, through social networking technology, participatory media can use images, text, audio, video, software, data, tags, or links from any other person in the network. That is that all information can be utilized within each other. Um, so I wanted to uh, go quickly to, to onedayonearth.org and just give a, a little quick overview of our website and some of the things that are going on over there. And uh, we'll go from then. So you have gotten some questions, Kyle. Do you want me to feed some of them to you now, or do you want to wait till the tour is over? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy to take some of them yeah. now. Um, so let me... I apologize. I, I wasn't looking over there. I guess I should have... I, I was like just the teacher who didn't <laughs> take anyone's hand. It can hand. be distracting to have uh, all of this going on. But let me go through some of them quickly. Okay, so uh, Peggy asked, can it be individual participation as well as class participation? Absolutely. Um, we, we definitely um, see both ways, like a full classroom could just basically upload through one profile and, um, and that could be like just a class project. Or you can create a digital classroom, which is essentially a group what you'll have administrative, some administrative controls over where you, you could distribute, you know, and talk about how everything's going and really sort of share online within that group um, each student's, um, um, you know, participation in the project. And so we'd love to have, you know, when, when teachers have the resource to have every student individually participate, that's fantastic. But we also know that, you know, in some cases that's just not as feasible and, um, you know, I, I do have to mention that for children, um, you know, uh, uh, under the ages of 13, that the instructors will have to be the entry point to our website based on um, international law uh, having to do with COPA, which, um, you know, I know is um, it's still going to be a great project for them, and we have some suggestions within the toolkits on how to manage that and how to work with that. And uh, um, but yeah, I hope that answers the question. I think it does. There's there have been several questions about. Uh, waivers or licensing and those sorts of issues. Uh -huh. So uh, are you providing any direction in that regard? Uh, yes, we are. We haven't distributed all of these guidelines yet. Um, we actually, um, you know, we have a, a, a intellectual property lawyer who's, who's writing up a lot of this stuff for us. But basically, um, as far as waivers, uh, I, I am assuming that that means related to participation. Uh, yeah, if someone is a minor um, within their local region, they, are, they will need to um, more, um, sign some sort of release related to if we're going to integrate any sort of footage potentially into a film. Now, to participate in a project, you know, you're going to have to go with the standards in your school or your local locality as to whether um, a waiver would be needed for a minor to participate. As far as um, how footage is like, I don't know if that was, is that answering the question or is it more related towards... Um, um, so I think there are a number of nuanced questions in here, you know, one of which is... I could, I could probably, there might be more to that, so I want to make sure that, um, that, that um, 
you know that there's uh there's fully fully explained but you know we're really um I'm looking yeah, right. at all these so there's the initial act here. of the students taking original material and placing it on the name so the moment that they do that or they upload it in some fashion uh, mm -hmm. it, I'm mm -hmm. assuming there's some they're agreeing in, at some level that they're sharing it under some form of co Creative Commons. Uh, yeah, um, right now the the plan and, and you know we we wanted to um, make sure that participants have access to a license to each other's footage for non-commercial use. So anyone who participates in the project will have access to each other's footage to mash it up and do post-production process and collaborative processes together and, and in many cases with nonprofits this also is um, you know and they're they're planning on creating um, I would say films that are short films that are um, uh, what's the word informative about a particular topic whether it be di biodiversity or disaster relief or so on and so forth but in the case of schools you know there, there's just, we want to make sure that everybody can access each other's footage and utilize it for you know building whatever you guys want to build together. Um, so the second so half that's of how that works. I was going to say this, mm -hmm. so I think the second going, half of that question is what about guidelines for helping students understand uh, whether or not they need to get a waiver or a form from somebody else's work that they're using, whether they're taking pictures at a place where they don't let you actually uh, publish that uh, yes. for individuals who would want to have a waiver signed before their image got released. Absolutely. Um, yes, we will have releases available, and in all cases, we strongly recommend. Even though international laws are different in many places, um, the you know we strongly recommend um, getting a release whenever possible. Um, what it comes down to is that that's also you know that's good behavior. Um, but in addition to that, it's also, um, you know, it has legal ramifications. Not so much from sharing on the website, because if someone asks you to pull it down, we'd pull it down. But more from a perspective of if we were to actually utilize this beyond a website and put it in a picture, a, a film or a video that started to get played around, the last thing we'd want to do is find out that someone had have a photo, their photo or video taken, and and they didn't feel good about it. So um, we will have guidelines related to that. Um, we also know it's a documentary, so there's always a balance there. But in all cases, we do encourage that, and we'll provide the re proper releases for students to be able to get them when necessary. Um, there, yes, does that it does. The and there are a couple other quick ones. One was: Is there a way for uh -huh. the educators to contact each other after the presentation, tonight's nice presentation, so they can continue the collaboration? I'm assuming the answer to that is go to the OneDayOnEarth.org site and sign up. And and can you? That's a uh -huh. name. So can they start a group in there? Absolutely, they can start a group right now, and um, they can start talking in, um, amongst each other related to what they want to do. And you know, the the way the projects that we're, we've developed are going to be presented um, are in groups. Um, so the idea there is we we upload the the PDF prompt of what the project is, and then you know, as you as we distribute these, it's sort of like here's where you can learn about that project, so that people can start collaborating specifically within those. And as I've said, you know, it's great for people to uh, you know come up with their own projects and own ideas and start. And start, you know, finding collaborators because that's what this is all about. Okay, one final um, quick question. People are wondering when will the documentary mm -hmm. be completed? Do you think? Uh, we are shooting, and we won't we won't want to announce the exact date, but uh, November the following year. Um, there's a pretty good amount of time that we're going to need related. Oh, someone's calling in the office here. Sorry about that, but uh, there's a um, there's a good amount of time that is. Um, needed for post production on something like this. So uh but in the meantime we know there will be a lots of interesting collaborations and 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 short films created by students as well as professionals that will kind of be interesting reasons to hang out on the site and see what's come of um what's come of everything that we've created together. Okay, so I um I've put up the website in the web tour and then you will want to click mm -hmm. on the top right, you'll want to click the tour guide checkbox. And then wherever you take okay. us, that's where we will all go. Sure, sure. I think you know. I I'm going to keep this pretty simple. But, um, 
One thing I want to point out, this map that you see, hopefully you see it, um, some of you in Internet Explorer are maybe getting a, um, uh, a warning to use Firefox or to use Chrome. That has to do with the fact that we overloaded the map um, pretty quickly, and we're actually be moving it to a Google Earth map uh, eventually just because. But I wanted to show you guys a couple things, which is if you really search around this, these are actual people within the community. Now, we geotag everyone. Just to, to be clear, too, we don't use your address. So if a student signs up, we use the zip code, and then we offset the coordinates. So there is a level of privacy that, that we, we are aware of. We don't want people seeing where, you know, Sally's home might be so that they can go to her house and, you know, find out more about the video. You know, we, we understand that. And so if you, if you click on any of these, it has the name of the person. And you can actually um, go as far as, you know, I don't know if it will take me there. But um, uh, for some reason it didn't. But uh, nonetheless, each one of those takes you to the profile page of the person who's participating in the project. And right now, those are, you know, just tons of, tons of people all over, pretty much. Um, some of them documentary filmmakers, many of them educators. And I just wanted to give a quick sense of, of the regionality of where people are participating. Um, I wanted to also show that, uh, uh, let me see, by, oops, these are participants. So these are some great spotlight participants up here if you're inter looking for some inspirational people. But what I wanted to show actually was by region. Um, so if you wanted to, um, what we've done is we basically um, made sure that whatever region someone is from, they get they get tagged to that region. So if you wanted to see participants in Ghana, for instance, here's people that have signed up to film in Ghana. And because of this, um, I see that uh, you know education will have its own build out in this way. But I think that um, I just want to show off a couple of those things related to the diversity of the site. We also have. Um, uh, causes the American Red Cross is participating. Anyone who has a nonprofit, we encourage them to participate to create media or create an actual call to action to create media that day. And um, I do think that like there will be some cross collaboration between the educational community supporting some of these causes through media creation as well. And I, I think that would be pretty exciting um, because they, have, for instance, you know, uh, water.org which is a, um, the site is actually hidden right now, but water.org, we just created a page, and they're asking, um, they have, you know, a lot of supporters throughout the world, um, 500,000 followers on Twitter and so on and so forth, and they basically said, um, film your water, share your water supply, show us, um, you know, what could be better about your water, um, and, uh, and so on and so forth, and, um, and so that, that creates a giant amount of media from all over the world comparing water supplies, which is so informative from um, a humanities anecdotal evidence point of view, but also very inspirational if they were to cut together and show the difference between a well and what, you know, sub-Saharan Africa compared to the reservoirs that we rely on in the United States. So anyways, I'm, I'm kind of uh, going from here to there. The last place um, I really want to make sure you guys know about is that um, that, that uh, you can um, you can sign up for toolkits. Um, that number is really large. We've had a, a lot of schools, and we're, we're curious to see how uh, how many people actually show up. But um, it, it's growing daily. I think we had about 40 signups today from different schools, which is really exciting. And um, right here, you know, what this means is we put you on a list as soon as the toolkits are done. We're going to send you the links to the toolkits that that are appropriate to you. And um, and I think that's pretty much it. Is there anything else I should talk about, Steve? I mean, I've never really uh, done anything like this before, so I <laughs> hope great. people have enjoyed it. Do you want to do um, some Q&A and let people take the mic if they want to ask questions? Uh, sure, sure. I'm sure. It seems like there's probably a lot of questions over there, and I'm not sure how they've all been answered or to what degree. But um, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, that's, I would happily, happily uh, have the mic here, and uh, you know I've been talking a lot too. So if anyone else wants to chime in, I'm, I'm okay, happy so for that Okay, so we'll let well. you, if you'd like to, raise your hand to take the microphone. That's the hand with the green up arrow. Uh, you also had given me the education portal link, and I don't think we've looked at that yet, have we? Kyle, you, you turned your mic off if you were talking there. 
How do you know that? You, you, you must be. Uh, <laughs> There's you must a gap. Be, There's okay. a pause. <laughs> there must be some sort of. Uh, there must be some sort of uh, thing. We need to update some of these numbers here. We actually have quite a few more locations, and the students. Well, all this means is location-wise is that you know the reason this number is so high is that we have like. Um, Several school boards that want to distribute to everybody in the, that they can within and within their you know their their district, and so uh, um, you know we actually don't know how many classrooms it's going to be, um, but uh, the number of look actual individual classrooms is definitely over 400 right now for signups to receive these things, and we really hope to really take this further because the more people that do this, the more exciting it can be, the more pro they can come out of it the more collaborations that can happen. And, um, you know, I think that uh, it's pretty pretty exciting in that way. Um, and this is, you know, if you're, again, if you uh, if you click here, it's uh, 1010 Educate to receive a toolkit. You can also find it up here in the tab. I don't know if they can see. Am I tour guiding or no? So you are, but only to the page. If you're scrolling the page, they don't see that scroll. Ah, so, okay. So gotcha. just go to... Go click it, on the link again for the sign up, and we'll put it into the chat. Yeah, the, the actual straight sign up is right here. Um, you know, educate with us. So, and we got a hand raised. That's a relief. I was worried that I talked them to death. But we do have a hand raised. And Theo, I'm going to give you the mic, and then there are a couple of questions in the chat as well that we'll go to after Theo. So, Theo, you have the mic. Great. Thanks, Keith. Um, this is just so exciting. It's going to be wonderful to be part of. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you, Steve, for having Kyle tonight. Um, I, I do a lot of um, music, and I have composed a, a Healing Earth album. Um, if I do work with people to do video, would you include music if we have music with the video? Um, I'm sorry. The question is, is, could you include the music with the video? Hello? Yeah, that was my question. Uh, like, uh -huh. I have one piece that really works well with whales, uh, and we have a uh -huh. lot of orca whales up here in the northwest. Oh, so if yeah. we did something with whales and we had the music to go with it, could we give you both? Absolutely. I think that would be awesome. I mean, you could totally um, you could embed the music in your personal page, and we've been lo working on so on the technology side, you know, we really wanted to incorporate music more into this project um, from a vision point of view. Um, we're a little behind on that element, so you know, it's going to be a little bit more a, do a DIY share. But um, related to actually using music on a soundtrack of a particular submission to the project, I just want to make sure that people, you know, if that's music that you've created, that's fantastic. I mean, that's amazing. Um, I do want everyone to be aware that you know we would never encourage people to use music that they don't have the rights to. Um, you know, and but uh, that's that's uh, that's. That's for uh, that's for you guys to always sort out. Yeah, but, um, no, that's a nice thing, Kyle. This is um, this is these are all original, my own original compositions, and it would be great to both offer the music because I've been trying to find a place for that and to put it with videos. So I wouldn't have to worry about copyright; it's mine. That's that's really that's really beautiful. I would I, I look really look forward to hearing music and whales that you've you've created both. And I think that's that's amazing. And um, I know I, I saw some chat going by here. Um, I want to make clear that there's no specific way to upload an MP3 th through our current module, but there's certainly a bunch of ways to upload MP3s and share them directly on the site. And we're, we may have offer, we'll be sure to offer some solutions that people can, can use a, a site such as SoundCloud to upload their own MP3s and definitely say, look, I have this music I want to share. It's, it's, you know, use it and, uh, or here's, here's how it works with my video and here's why I feel it's important. So, cool. Uh, what else? Uh, okay, so uh, we've got another hand raised and um, Carol, Carrie Ann has done a great job in the chat of answering questions. So I think she's answered the ones that I was going to bring up. But if, you, if you've asked a question that hasn't been answered, please feel free either to raise your hand or put it back in the chat again. Jocko, I'm giving you the mic. To turn your mic on, you click on the larger mic button at the lower left of your screen. And we're not seeing your mic come on. So Jocko, if you, there you go. Come on for a second. 
You may not have your microphone configured. It's an on-off switch, the larger microphone button. Um, go ahead and go up to Tools Audio and run the audio setup. Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Good. Um, my question is, are there other types of feedback besides the ultimate documentary and the connections that you make with various other uh, schools or or whatever? Um, other types of feedback along the way. Um, feedback um, me meaning like um, you know we tell you that if you know this is what you did right or this is what you did wrong or 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 I think I think in general you know we're hoping for the community to be able to you know c comment on and rate any sort of video and and the amount of hits that your video receives is is of is an obvious amount of feedback and uh, you know because you're collaborating in these groups I think that you know the majority of the feedback is really collaborative um obviously there's a film we would love we have uh, we have a lot of grandiose ideas that I can't make promises about right now um but they do relate to both installation and sort of topical sort of um application design um ideas that we really want to um you know push out there eventually maybe maybe we have to do this event again to make it fully effective but what that comes down to is that w we have some really um so we have some further ideas beyond it but as of right now just based on funding and our our own uh ability to to um stay awake um to get through this thing you know the primary feedback is really from your community and who you interact with and you know eventually a a motion picture film and uh hopefully there will be much more in the future I want to point out, this is Jay talking, that the feature film really um, has been talked about as just a flagship, and there, we, you know, we do uh, want other um, outputs and feedback to come out of this. It's just that um, the, the flagship project is the feature film. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 that's one of those things where, um, you know, we're also looking. We really want to produce a book. We haven't announced that either, but. You know, we'd we'd love to, even if it's a small run, and you know, primarily for the people who participated. Uh, you know, we really want to be able to put together something there as a print. But because the details are a little bit budget based right now, we want to. Um, we may be announcing something in the next, you know, prior to ten ten ten. But uh, as of today, I, I I would be careful to tell you the full scope of that, as I would. Want, I want to deliver exactly what we uh was, what we say we're going to. So. Um, so, do you want to have Carrie Ann or Jay say anything else about the project? I'd be happy to have either one of them say something. So, Carrie Ann, you've been adding a lot in the chat there. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about our pen pal project. Can you hear me? You're coming in loud and clear. Okay, great. So um, we have set up a pen pal project, and we're really hoping that students will be able to collaborate with other students uh, in other parts of the world. And um, this is a project that we're really excited about, and we just want to encourage all of you to consider that project and to consider uh, finding a school in another area of the world that you're interested in. Um, and getting in touch with them and finding a way to collaborate together on 10, 10, 10. Uh, the project will be in the toolkit and it will also be on the website. Um, so that's one that we're very excited about. And we're also excited about the archive that we'll be creating. Um, it will have a long shelf life that we can return to again and again as classrooms, as teachers, as students to search topics, to look at different parts of the world, and to create new art uh, and ideas and collaborations from. Terrific. Jay, what about you? Well, I just want to say that um, this is, you know, this project is a great way to get involved in 21st century learning skills while working on a project that is personally meaningful um, to the people who are participating. It's really easy to see how a project like 
uh, working on a project like this can be personally meaningful. And from what I've seen, that's just the best way to get people to actually learn real things. Um, and if you can get it to align with your uh, curriculum standards, if you're a teacher in a, in a school, then that's, um, that's great. Some of the project ideas uh, show, give you some idea of how to uh, start using them along with the curriculum that you're teaching. Um, and uh, all you need is a camera to participate. And, and almost any camera has a video feature these days. So I think it's just really uh, easy to jump on board. And really, real learning can really happen in a fun way. Good. So if you have a final question for Kyle or Carrie Ann or Jay or Daniel, this is a good time to ask it. You can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat. Again, Carrie Ann's been answering questions as we go along here. So I think the ones in the chat have been answered. But feel free to raise your hand, the hand with the green up arrow. Yeah, I, I, I saw also so many questions going by there. I want to make sure that they're all accurately answered. If someone asked if the videos could be as long as they want, well, they technically they can um, be as long as they want. But And I think uh, someone wrote back a really good suggestion, think quality over quantity. Um, the, they are, will be limited to a 500 megabyte upload. You could do multiple uploads technically, but we really think that the, you know the, that 500 megabytes is probably going to be more than enough to really share. Um, in most cases, the, really the the best thing, and it's it's one of those things where um, you know we we definitely encourage to be selective when you're going to showcase what you care about and what matters to you, and really make a point about it that um, you know bringing it down and, and you know sometimes a good two three minutes can be so much more impactful than 15 that's uh, so that's that's just my little little thought related to that sorry to interject but I just saw it there um, you're not interjecting if you're the main guest oh that's so, right <laughs> well, I'm going to thank uh, learn central my employer illuminate and uh, for the for providing this platform see so blue and associates for their their book budget do know that we've got some really fun interviews coming up the rest of this week. Um, Kyle and Daniel and Jay and Carrie Ann, um, obviously going to onedowner.org is the best place to go. Do you have uh, personal contact information if someone wants to email you personally or directly? Um, is that on the site? I think um, the best place, because several of us will get it, is um, to do um, educate at onedowner.org. Um, that way, there's a couple of us on the loop there, and we can um, we can field any questions and follow-ups, and we'd be happy to 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 you know to talk to anybody about what uh, what they want to do, and and uh, we really 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 love having this, you uh, talk about our project, Steve. It's been wonderful, and this illuminate thing is the first time I've been on here, but it's really cool. So thank you so much. I'm glad we didn't even turn on the webcams. Uh, and we are hoping that there will be some form of reporting about the project at the Global Education Conference in November. So we can look forward to that as well. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Steve. OK, I'm clapping now. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, uh, Daniel and Kyle. Thanks, Jay and Carrie Ann. Thank you all for coming. Sure hope you have a great evening or day wherever you are. And for those of you who can join us, we have some fun interviews coming up the rest of this week. It so looks like there's one more question. Oh, oh good. Let's go. All right, it was a clap. It was a clap that accidentally uh, hit the okay. hand raise button. <laughs> Common phenomenon. <laughs> well, thank anyway. you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie Ann. Thank, thank you so much. Bye. Good night. And good night, everybody. Thank you.